Hello, welcome to the weekly economic snapshot. This week, we'll look at the federal budget. The federal government works off a fiscal year that begins in October. We're in fiscal year 2024, which started on October 1st, 2023. The Congressional Budget Office projects that the federal government will spend about $6.9 trillion this fiscal year. About 60% of this is for what they call mandatory spending. It is spending that occurs automatically unless the law is changed. The largest pieces are the major entitlement programs. Social Security is 21% of federal spending, followed by Medicare, healthcare for retirees, and Medicaid, healthcare mainly for lower income people. Other mandatory spending includes veterans benefits and federal government pensions. 26% of federal spending is discretionary. This is the money appropriated by Congress in the budget every year. Of that 26, 12% is defense and 14 is non-defense. That is, most of what we typically think of as the federal government, the national parks, the FBI, NASA, the National Weather Service, and so forth, accounts for less than one-seventh of federal spending, or outlays, as they're officially known. The other large category is interest payments. These are now slightly larger than defense spending. While the government will send out about $6.9 trillion, it will take in $4.9 trillion. The difference is the federal budget deficit. With scary big numbers like this, I think it is helpful to scale them by the size of the economy. Federal spending is about 24% of US GDP and revenue about 17%. Spending as a share of GDP is projected to grow over time. Much of the growth comes from Medicare. This is partly because of more beneficiaries as our population ages, but also because healthcare costs are forecast to rise. Rising interest costs are the other main source of projected increases. Revenues are forecast to increase, but not as much as spending. Part of the forecast increase in revenue is due to the expiration of some of the tax cuts that were passed in the 2017 Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. The Congressional Budget Office is required to make its forecasts following the law as written. If those tax cuts are extended, it would add to the deficit. For example, in 2027, the government would need to borrow about $460 billion more. As an economist, sometimes I feel that discussions about the federal budget can have some moralizing and catastrophizing that isn't really justified by the economics. Countries that have had economic crises driven by government debt defaults have generally been borrowing in foreign currencies, which is not the case for the United States. And there are examples of countries that have managed higher debt loads than we have, such as Britain after the Napoleonic Wars and Japan today. The bonds issued by the US Treasury to finance the deficit are still seen as a desirable asset in the global financial system. So I don't think this should be seen as a crisis. But it is a matter for concern. When the federal government borrows, it is tapping into the same pool of savings that finances private investment. The effect is higher long-term interest rates, which will result in lower investment. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.